one of the stars of Stumptown here today. The one, the only, Mr. Cole Sebus. There he is. Cole Sebus. And with Cole is the lovely Natalie Wilson. Thank you for joining today. Thank you for having us. Oh my God, this is fun. I met, you know, when did I first meet you, Cole? On Spare Room. It was on Spare Room, wasn't it? Yeah. We had a good time on that. You, you know, you're a natural, natural born star. Yes, and I was a little baby. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, by the way, when when did you know you wanted to be an actor? I always uh so I was um I one day I went out I went out to my I went I, I came out out of the living room and watched T V and I got inspired into Disney. Like Drake and Josh and I Carly and Right. And, and and movies as well, like like um like Baywatch, and uh, High School Middle School. That's how I got inspired with all of that. And um, I also my sister Lauren, she did home videos. I went through home videos, and I also play um her bellhop. Her bellhop. Yeah, I think I've seen some of those videos. In fact, you have a, a, a wonderful show on YouTube, isn't it? Cole Cooks? Is that what it is? The uh... yes. yes, I love I love cooking with my sister. She's amazing and like it's like I like expressing myself with cooking and I want people to be inspired and turn on their own YouTube channel as well. Hey guys, welcome to Cole's Kitchen. Today, we'll make a healthy smoothie for you guys. I was watching some of those episodes the other day and I was going, oh my God, I've got to catch up on these. They're so great. <laughs> um, so you began, you actually began in the hit show Born This Way? Is that true? That's right, David. <laughs> And, and you know what? I know that we worked together on Spare Room, but I think we actually met just for like a split second at a party for, for Born This Way once. That's right, yes. And then, what was it? And then, a, a, I think it must have been a couple months later, I got a call and heard that you were in this movie and you needed a coach. I was in Albuquerque visiting my yeah. uncle at the time. Um, how was Spare Room? How was it? being in spare room. Man, it, it was um, like, I was in shock when I got that role and... It was my fault, that last day. We gotta go back. What? It's an order. I ignored the order. <sighs> I'm afraid we're not gonna be able to help you. If alone, you were going to appeal your husband's discharge status. If it's honorable, there would be death benefits. It was denied. Sorry. It remains other than honorable. Highly decorated. Gotta say, I did not see that coming. Are you sleeping in your car in my parking lot? If you want to work here, find some place to stay. Just some info on the room if it's still available. Yeah. This is the room. I'll take it. Really? So it's me, my brother Arrow, and Greg. <laughs> my boyfriend. You keep David. Uh, he's the strange man living with you now. What? You're lucky to have him. I, I am lucky to have him. It's just people usually say he's lucky to have me. He is. Through the ages, we'll grow. <laughs> Sometimes I, I have dreams about my husband. It only took me three minutes to tell me my husband was dead. You accepted a medal you didn't deserve. Why, why do you have those? I don't know what I'm gonna do. Why don't you love me like I love you? 
We have no benefits. We are in massive debt. I struggle every single day just to get us by. Well, I don't know how to fix it. And I want to. Why are you smiling? Because it's the first time since I met you that you look like a soldier. I was amazing. Like I feel blessed. I'm so happy, and it was a lot of fun working with you, David. Like you're, you're a lot of fun. You, you give me a lot of joy, and you done. Ah, you're amazing, and also Matt is amazing. I know. Well, and and tell tell us what the the, the relationship that the two of you have. So one of my best friends, John Fisher. He, his dad works at Biola, and, um, oh, you, you tell me too. You want me to jump in? Yeah, yeah. you jump in. So, um, I was an adjunct professor at Biola University teaching, um, theater appreciation, um, and I just, uh, got a email from one of my colleagues who said, hey, a family reached out and asked if anyone was interested in coasting and in, in, in coaching an actor with Down syndrome. And I was like, well, me, sign me up. Um, my younger brother has Down syndrome and I have an acting background. So I've always wanted to marry those two together and never knew how to go about doing that. And so it just fell into my lap that way. And Cole and I are super close now. And um, I'm with him when he shoots Stumptown and- I also practice comedy and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right now, since we're in between seasons, we're exploring different genres of film acting. Nice. And um, yeah, we're pretty close. I love it. I could see uh, you guys have amazing chemistry together, with this, <laughs> which is what does it, you know? I mean, and and such good work in Stumptown. Oh my God, I'm like, I, I started watching it this last week and I'm on, I'm in the middle of the season now. And I'm like, oh my God, you're so, I, I was knew you were good because after after working with you that, that little time that we did uh, in, in, in Spare Room, and seeing the film, but then seeing you and how much you've grown and uh, as an actor, and you're so real, so amazing in that show. I agree. I agree too. <laughs> <laughs> grown in confidence as yeah, well. Yeah, I've grown in confidence like, because like, over season one, I got way a lot better. Mm -hmm. like, I, I improved like, all each episode. I got better from the season one. Now I got a lot better that like I feel happy like that I got I got really experience and I got way more experience to to learn these roles and I feel happy that I got better every each episode. Hey, uh so I've been thinking and I, I hear ya. Okay, so let's make a deal. I'm gonna extend your curfew. And I'm, I'm gonna back off. I'm gonna give you some space, okay? And then we will revisit this in a couple of months. I love it out. Yeah, I just, I can't afford that right now. I had the money. I've been saving. It's not about the money. It's just, you're not ready, Anz. I am. Why are you being like this? Why, why are you mad? I'm, I'm just, I don't get it. I found a play for people like me. No, you're not living with strangers. That is not happening, okay? You know what, I'm done talking about this with you. Well, you know, it's interesting too, in the movie, Spare Room, and now in Stumptown, you're, you, it's like a brother and sister thing. Yeah. In both of them, I found that fascinating. And in a way, right, the two of you sitting next to you feel like a brother and sister kind of feel. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes he calls me his set sister. <laughs> yeah, I call you my sister. We're like family, right? Family? Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> Pete Cole, that's what we call ourselves.
We are family. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. So you were talking earlier about some of the shows that you liked. Um, and and when I see the show, I see the beach. What is that show on the beach? The um, Oh, Baywatch. Baywatch. <laughs> you get to 56, some of the brain cells go. <laughs> so Baywatch, but that being connected, when you said that, I know that you are very active in sports and you, you like to go to the beach and you like to work out and swim and football, softball. Tell me more about that. So with Special Olympics, I, I got into, um, I'm trying to think. You do swimming, right? Well, I, oh, actually, my, my Special Olympics, I was, it was tennis when I first started oh. Special Olympics. I did tennis, I did swimming. That, that's all I did. You can, you, can, you, can, you can do that. Oh, is that your doggy? Yeah. My what, dog, what's River. His, what's his name? River. Oh, River! Oh, my God, I want a dog so bad. What, what? Here you go. She wants to play. Oh, she... <laughs> oh, she. Sorry, River. Oh, I love River. Oh, my God. What kind of dog is it? Oh, a mini, a mini, a trillion shepherd. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to have. So I smart. I tell you, when, when we get out of quarantine, after I travel to Greece, I'm going to get a dog, and we could all go dog walking together. Yes! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, back to the Special Olympics. So... Yeah, Where, uh, I did. Yeah, it was tennis and swimming when I when I uh, did Special Olympics. And that, that was a lot of fun. Like tennis, it was my passion to um, have fun and stuff. Like I wanted to compete with other people, and yeah. I wanted to be a be a, a, a um a better person. Nice, nice. You know, because I see you in in on your Instagram or Facebook. I mean, you're working out. You work out all the time. Yeah, I do work out all the time. I've been trying to get my six pack. I have a one pack. <laughs> oh, no, I have a 12 pack. <laughs> what? A 12 pack. Ah, okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but I'm working on, I, I'm working on, on myself and um, keeping myself healthy and Stay, stay motivated and, and I'll keep my keep working out. Nice. I um it's interesting because since we've been in quarantine, I've gotten I, I'm cooking more and I'm cooking healthy, which I've got to for the heart. And then I bought and put together a stationary bike. So Wow. Wow. Good for you. Good for you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Step by step, you know. Um uh what was I going to say? Oh, is what about the similarities and the differences between you and Ansel? Is there a difference? Or you want to start with differences? Yeah, differences. Yeah. What's different? Different about me and Ansel, like for Cole, like me and my family, we're, we love each other and stuff. Like we always close. For Ansel, he, our family abandoned us and all that. Yeah. That's totally different. Ah, okay. Okay. And what about similarities? Similarities is me and me and Dex, our brother and sister. Right. And Ansel loves soccer. Mm-hmm. And, and, like, Ansel is very smart, I would say. Yeah. And a leader too. Like I, I help Dex around and stuff, and I help her a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, to play the role of Ansel, you have to be pretty smart yourself. So you're probably yes. smarter than he is. Um, uh, what is it like being a sex symbol now that you're on TV? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I try to think. So simple. <laughs> Make it for the comment, David, for the sex symbol thing. Well, you know, I've heard it. Funny. Yes, you're welcome. 
Yeah, I get that a lot. Like, every time I go out and stuff, like, people think I am a sex a little bit sexy. Yeah. Well, I, I can imagine. And you have a lot of wonderful uh, uh, co-stars on that show, don't you? Yes. Like Cameron Mannheim. <laughs> you finally got your hair cut. <laughs> yeah, I got my hair cut. <laughs> I can't believe I get to see you twice in one week, Cole. Yeah. I'm so excited. Hey. Love it. Hello, Cameron. Hey. Hey. Uh, so you saw you've seen each other twice already. Well, we did a happy anniversary shout out to the American with Disabilities Act, and um, I wanted to do it with Cole, and he was game. So we did a video and sent it in to. Um, thank them for all the inclusion that they've done. And Cole was so happy to do it. And I was so happy to see him, but it was prior to his haircut. So he looked like a vagabond. A shaggy boy. <laughs> <laughs> he was gorgeous anyway, cause he is, but uh, you look so clean cut. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. You talking about how gorgeous, because the, the question right before you came on was how does it feel like being a sex symbol? Yeah, how does it? Or are you asking me? Because I can speak on that too. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> you can ask me. Go for it. <laughs> Both of all of you. Cole, you go first. How does it feel? <laughs> Very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Being sexy feels sexy. <laughs> yes, I feel that all the time. That's awesome. How about you, Cameron? Well, I've always said that the sexiest body part is confidence. And you and I have that in spades. And I think that's why people are so attracted to us. I love that. I love that. Yes, definitely. You know, and I'm, I'm learning myself in quarantine that uh, I have a sexy part too. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zoom really brings out the sexy and everybody. And I'll tell you something. Yeah. I've never looked better because, by the way, I have this gorgeous light that <gasps> I put on me, so I look really, like, my skin looks good. Then my camera is above my double chin, so I look slender. Okay. I mean, from here up, I look great. You don't want me to stand up, but um, <laughs> well, I think Zoom is good to people. <laughs> I, I tell you, I've got to, I see, I've got to keep my chin up, too, and I've got to get, i got a light, but it doesn't work, so I've got to get a new one. Oh, you gotta get on that. Come on See, now. Everybody, that was a training lesson on Zoom. So it's your time Zoom. to shine, but you need uh, a light. Right. <laughs> I have a, a question for actually, since there's four of us here, all all three of you, what is your biggest joy in life? For me, I would say my biggest joy is working with sometimes my castmates. Um, I love, we haven't worked together yet, but me and Karen don't do that, but eventually I hope they do that too. Yeah, but Joy yeah. is like... Cole and I have not been in a scene together, but we're always together, you know, in hair and makeup and around the studio. And it happened to be, you know, I met Cole when my son went to college. And so having Cole, who is just such a love, come up and give you a hug and make you feel so warm and gooey. My son was off to college, made me like burst out into tears constantly. Oh. <laughs> it's so. the, yeah, that's what, it's nice to have that. It's nice to have that somebody you can hold on to. I know. Yeah, Natalie. Yeah, Natalie. Um, I mean, I, I feel like I live a very joyful life and I'm so grateful. Um, I think, my my family and friends i have the best husband in the world and i have wonderful um support here cole's family too and um, i think just yeah the people in my inner circle really make life wonderful and i'm so grateful wow i tell you yeah it's family really is and i consider this extended family that we all have and share a, a blessing for me so i i i'm there with y'all there with y'all. I know during these times of isolation, our family and friends have really come through for us. Um, you know, because when you're busy going out and running errands, you can, you know, forget those little important things that make us full. 
Yeah. Um, but when you got to stay home to keep yourself and everyone safe, you got to rely on um, phone calls and, and Zooms and texts and games over the internet and things like that, you know, and even people watching movies together, you know, now they're doing premieres where a whole bunch of people kind of watch together and comment. It's like, we need to be together. Yeah, we do. It, as humans, we need it. And we're so creative in figuring out how to do it. Like you are now, yeah, we're together. I feel so close to Cole right now because we've been hanging out all week. <laughs> <laughs> now you, somebody said, do you, does she still play poker? Do you still play poker? Oh, do I still play poker? <laughs> it is my only source of income. Oh. <laughs> I do play about three nights a week, and uh, I'm pretty serious, yeah. Good. I mean, not generally. When I'm working, I don't. <laughs> hey, now. You play yeah. with Cole on the set, right? <laughs> something to look forward to, but I do play, and I love it. And there's all kinds of good poker sites to have private games with your friends and to play for fake money. Right. I mean, I just have to say that. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, my, my thing is... is I have to get away from sugar. So I'm, I built my, I was telling them earlier, I built a bike and now I'm like riding a bike in the indoors to keep the heart well. Um, now you, you also um, worked with a dear friend of mine in the hot flashes, um, Mark Povinelli. Oh, Mark. We love Mark so much. You know, there was these five badass women yeah. and Mark. And we just completely took over New Orleans. Um, we took over the casinos. We took over the bars. We took over the restaurants. I mean, when in New Orleans, you know, do as they do. And Mark was, you know, he was we're there with all the girls keeping up with us. It was pretty fun. That's great. He's awesome. We oh, love he's, him. He's amazing. And it was so great because one day he wrote me a letter uh, and uh, a letter of recommendation, and it had the, the, the stationery, the president of the little people of America, and I was like, I have to frame this, and it was oh. like two pages. Oh. I've uh, also marched with him. He was at the Women's March with his daughter. He's just, he's just an exceptional human being, and I feel, I just feel grateful to have uh, spent that time with him, gotten to know him, and to support him. I love that guy. Yeah. So. We love you, Mark. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, Cole, um, of course, you're still doing Stumptown, but in the future, is there a role? Have you ever desired a role that you would love to play? I would say superhero, because that's, I always wanted to do a Marvel movie. A what, what? A Marvel movie. A Marvel movie? Oh, yes. Oh, that would be great. That would be amazing. And reading minds. Ooh, nice. Okay, that would. All right, be you're giving you're giving people ideas right now, Cole. I know, I'll, girl. I'll, I'll let you be a producer, since it's your idea. I know, right? We're all starting to think. Okay, what would I play in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> you and I were supposed to do a short movie this uh, this uh, summer. I well, not this summer. In March, when um, when things got shut down, but. That would be a great idea for a short movie for the festival. Yeah, great. Yeah, that was was that, that the disability film yeah. challenge? Yeah. yeah, I I have to. I sorry that I don't have the um, name of it, but uh, your seals disability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, John doing... Lawson was going to direct it. Do you know John? Yeah. So I'm going to have to pitch the uh, superhero film now, Cole, because that's <laughs> a great idea. It happened here. <laughs> it happened here. <laughs> there you go, magic. Well, you know what? They, you know, they came out that they're doing it now in July, and oh. it's been, it's documentary though. It, it's changed to documentary. Oh. Okay. So. Well, you know, that's just another wall. We're gonna have to come <laughs> around and figure it out. Figure it out. Nothing's gonna stop us. <laughs> no, not at all. Oh my God. So, um. One other thing, Cameron, you have been an advocate in the community for so long, and didn't you start out as a sign language interpreter? I did, I did. I, um, 
I learned sign language when I was in graduate school. It's for, you know, a whole, a, a completely another story for another time. Right. And um, it just happened to be around the time, you're hearing my phone ring, let me turn that off. Um, it happened to be around the time the American with Disabilities Act passed. So here I was a kind of a brand new person who was just fluent in sign language. And all of a sudden deaf people were like, not only do I want an interpreter, I am now protected by law that yeah. I can have an interpreter. So the interpreter phones were ringing off the hook and I got all this amazing work because it was just, I was there at the right time, at the right place when my skills were needed. And even though I was a baby interpreter, I got to do some of the most incredible things, like incredible things, uh, hospitals, emergencies, and legal proceedings. It was crazy. And I would ride around on my motorcycle in New York. I remember coming through the emergency room uh, because somebody had been in an accident and taking off my helmet and my hair falling down. And I'm like, I'm here. You talk about superheroes. Yeah. I felt like a superhero back then. Um, and I loved it. And it was uh, what I did as I was struggling to be an actor. It was a great, you know, job, but also something I really believed in and felt good about. Not just for me, waiting tables didn't feel like it served my heart and soul. So this really did. Yeah. And um, I got active and tried to help, you know, progress the, all the causes. And it was amazing, amazing. And I met some incredible people who are still my friends. I spoke to Marley yesterday. Right. And um, it was. Uh, and then you, you went on to do Spring Awakening on Broadway. I did Spring Awakening on Broadway with uh, 11 deaf actors. It was incredible. Um, I've done, I always mention to producers that I'm fluent in sign language and try to get actors on who know sign language. So I've worked with, you know, many deaf people through the year. I re-reminded our producers on Stumptown that that was something that I would be interested in. So hopefully more diverse people everywhere. That's all yeah. I say. Definitely, definitely. Hey, Henry, I love Henry Tana. I watched it and I love you all. <laughs> Some of my greatest work, Paul, was on Hannah Montana. I watched it last night. <laughs> I, love you, I, I love what Karen is this. <laughs> yeah. You know why I did that show? Not that I, you know, I, it really wasn't on my radar, right. but um, my son was totally in love with uh, Selena Gomez, in love with her. And so um, I tried to get tickets for us to go and watch it, you know, so I could be like the cool mom who got tickets. Yeah. And they said, I'm not kidding, we don't give tickets to celebrities unless they'll be on the show. It was such a hit at the time, they wouldn't even give us tickets. And I'm like, okay, if I have to be on the show just to get my son in, then I did the show. And then who knew? When I used to walk down the street, if somebody was like 40 years old and their, their eyes lit up, I knew they recognized me from the practice. Right. And then I'd be walking down the street and then a kid would be like seven, be like, oh. and I'd be like, well, why are they looking at me like that? And it was like, it was Hannah Montana. They all love that show. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> Thanks, so, Paul. What is your biggest dream? My and biggest I'm, dream. we'll start with you. We've got everybody on this one. What is your biggest dream in life? Who, who, who's you? We'll start with Cole. Cole. My biggest dream. <laughs> my biggest dream is still to do like my my dream is to like keep acting and do movies and TV shows. I want to keep going because acting is my passion. I love it so much that like, I want to keep going because I, one day I want to do a movie with Tom Cruise. <laughs> there you go. Maybe Mission Impossible 55. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about you, Natalie? Gosh. Um... You know, I think in, in life, I just want to be happy. Um, so whatever I do, I just want to make sure that it's, it's fulfilling to me as a person and making a difference in the world. So I'd, I'd, um, I'd love to just be a working actor. I also want to continue to be an advocate for actors with disabilities. That is something that I'm super passionate about. 
So um, just, yeah, I mean, being happy and fulfilled and helping others, really. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Cameron? You know, that's a big question. Uh, to be honest, David, I am, I feel like I'm living my dream. I mean, not right this second in this terrible time in our history, but I have this beautiful family and I have good health and I love my job and my friends. My biggest dream is to really just see us take heed of this moment in time and do better um, and love our planet and love each other and um, try to live more peacefully. That really is my biggest dream. I would give up much of what I have to see that happen because I think when people feel safe and healthy and can count and rely on the earth, I think most of our dreams will more, you know, uh, rapidly come true. Yeah. Well, and you? What's yours? You, David. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Turning it on you. <laughs> okay, throw it on me. Um, at this moment, my biggest dream, and I'm very in tune to that too, it's I really would love, I would love there to be more love in the world. For because sure. this hate thing is really getting old. And um, I really would like this time in history for us to shift. I mean, this is the time we're here. It's either, either now or never. So I really want everybody to find the love. Me too. Me too. Me too. We found the love right here. So we just have to make it go out there. Right. We got the love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. You are all just joy, a joy for me and for everyone. And the show is amazing, Stumptown. Uh, thank you, Cameron, for surprising. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Natalie, for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. And Cole, I love it. I love watching somebody like that's one of my uh, other biggest joys is to see somebody somebody i love succeed thank you david okay. sure.